the textbook definition of hypnosis is that it is a natural state that we all get into, right? So I'm going to challenge your thinking a little bit so that you can improve your hypnosis skills and not actually just your hypnosis skills, the therapeutic part of hypnosis, which is why you came into it to begin with, right? You became a hypnotherapist because you wanted to help people and you wanted to really uh, help them find their own solutions naturally. And hypnosis is definitely one of the methods that we can do this. How However, there's this big contradiction and even conflict about, okay, so if not a hypnosis is a natural state, why are we leading our clients towards it, right? Why are, why are we guiding our clients towards uh, the hypnosis when, when it, it should be natural? They should definitely just fall into it. And why is it that some people think that they can't go into a, a hypnosis? A lot of hypnotherapists out there will really focus on hypnosis and prove to their clients that they can be hypnotized, which if you try something over and over again, if you try to force something, then it creates a different effect, right? Or the opposite effect. That's just the law of reverse effect. If we try to convince our clients that they are hypnotizable, they will very much resist that already natural process. And so um, the reason why I want to talk about this is that you really want to focus your attention on the things that help your clients. You are here because you want to get better at the therapeutic aspect of your, your client sessions, the actual change, change work, the transformational work. That is what you want to get better at, right? You want to improve your client outcomes. And so if you just look at the hypnosis part, why are you getting better at something that naturally occurs to begin with? Now, obviously we can get better at things that we're naturally good at. Like we can always get better at walking sure but in order <laughs> for you to get better at walking what needs to happen right we want to be able to look at the principles of how uh, how we walk right what's the natural gait like what uh, is our posture doing so looking at the principles of how to be able to walk properly instead of just getting better at the walking which is it doesn't really make any sense. And now talking about it out loud doesn't make any sense. So why get better on a hypnosis, which is a natural process? Anyway, why not get yeah. better at the principle of the therapy part of hypnosis? Like what makes hypnotherapy effective? What are the principles that make hypnosis effective? I know it's not the relaxation state. Sure, that can be better or that helps the client to regulate their, their nervous system, which can help them. However, what truly uh, ignites that process of neuroplasticity and their new, new neural pathways is their ability to pay attention to the internal experience they have, pay attention to it, see it shifting, watch it shifting, notice it shifting, knowing that it was them that helped them shift. I'll give you an actual example for this. So for example, our client always says that they're always angry, right? Like just something really small that um, that happens in their daily life. Maybe it's just being on traffic and they just have road rage immediately. And throughout our sessions, are you going to hypnotize your client to um, imagine that they are in a sunny beach up the mountains, overlooking the mountains, and they're no longer angry and they're releasing the anger into the ethers uh, from, from, from the mountains? You could. You could. But what good will that do once a client is actually in the driver's seat feeling that road rage? They can visualize it. But again, it's a temporary shift, right? They have to like consciously think about it, which then I know can lead to habits moving forward. But what if I told you that there was another way we could help this client instead of having them visualize themselves um, up the mountains meditating? How about we actually help our clients explore as to why they're even angry to begin with? Like, what are they angry about? What is happening while they're in the seat in the driver's seat and they just want to like honk at everyone and yell at everyone like what is that process like because if you think about it this way once they understand what is actually happening inside of them as they're like like hands like this like clutching on the the steering wheel like about to like 
really <laughs> tell someone off, like having them learn about what is actually happening internally is going to be a lot more transformational than them listening to your voice, imagining that they are up in the mountains somewhere, right? So when we can just get better at this ability to help our clients to become more self-aware instead of telling them and what and their emotional state, telling what their emotional state should be, that's just superficial level shit, right? We want to be able to help our clients at a deep level where they know why they are triggered. They can understand why they're triggered so that the next time they are triggered, they're going to be like, oh, I'm being triggered again. I can shift it. And that is where neuroplasticity comes. That is how they'll change their patterns. It's not from, and I'm going to imagine myself not being here instead, and I'm in an island. Like that's avoidance. That's bypassing. That's not really changing the neural pathways. So I hope that this helped. I hope that this helped you think a little bit and really reconsider everything that you've learned because it, there's another side of amazing transformations waiting for you inside the Advanced Conversational Hypnosis Program.